Hey what's up everybody, Trofinet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. Today we'll take another look at the Squiatel faction with a fun little deck. Before we dive into the specifics I have to start with another admission though. I rarely play Squiatel. Nothing against the faction, it is great. There just wasn't much that stood out for me while the other factions did have, in my opinion, more interesting mechanics. However, I went through the cards again and tried to create a deck that was viable, but also really fun to use with its own identity. The result I call the Squiretel Shuffle deck. The Squiretel got some new teams and mechanics in the last few major updates. Traps were more fleshed out in the Thronebreaker update and we discussed them in depth in our Eldane episode. Crimson Curse, on the other hand, added the Harmony mechanic. Units with Harmony are boosted by one every time you play a different type of Squiatel unit, once for every type. This gels well with the focus on boosting that Squiatel kinda had from the beginning, so a great addition to the faction. This deck, however, focuses on another of the original aspects of Squiatel, moving units around. Cue the Squiatel Shuffle. There are two parts to this deck that we need to dive into. On the one hand, we have units that can move themselves, your other units or your opponent's units around. And on the other hand, we have cards that capitalize on those movements. Let's start with the units that can get this dance party started. Melina is our biggest party girl. She can move any unit you want to the other row once every two turns. With her four powers, she's also capable of staying alive long enough to at least use her ability twice. Ciaran or Kiaren can move a unit and lock it, taking out any abilities of that unit in the process as well. He is however your only locker, so use him wisely. Nivellen is a beast and can war up to three adjacent units to their other row. And you can also use this on your own units if you want to, but more on that later on. The Triant Boar is one of the few Crimson Curse cards in this deck. Every turn on order you can move this creature to the other row and if it started on the ranged row you can deal 2 damage to a selected enemy unit. If it started on the melee row it heals itself fully back to its 5 power. It's an incredibly powerful engine card with its 5 power even without any of our movement synergies yet, provided you can keep it alive, because it's a prime target for your opponent to take out. The Vryhat Dragoon can simply move any one unit to the other row, so a simple bronze addition there. New common Dryads, the Dryad Matrons, move to the rightmost position on their row at the end of each turn. And if they moved, they boost the unit to their left by one after they moved. Geralt is also present with the Art sign. He can select up to three enemy units and damage them by two each. On top of them, he moves any of those units that were on the melee row to the ranged row. And last but not least, our glorious leader Bruver Hoog, the Elder in Chief of the Dwarves of Mahakam. He can move a unit to its other row three times during a match. If it's an ally, it gets boosted by two. If it's an enemy, it gets damaged by two. So a lot of dancing moves and movement possibilities. It's called the Squiretel Shuffle after all. But all of this movement isn't getting us much on its own. Sure, moving a unit can be a counter in and of itself, some units' abilities only work on a specific row, so you can disable them just by moving them around without the need for damage or a lock. But we can do so much more. Let's go over the possibilities. We have two major bronze synergy cards. The Dolblatana sentries are one of our best synergies. If you put him on the ranged row, he boosts every ally that moves by one, and if he's on the melee row, on the other hand, he damages each moving enemy by one. Combine this with all our movement options and the sentries can have a lot of point potential. They are likely to be quickly targeted by your opponent however, so keeping them alive is also important. You can even change their role whenever you want by moving the sentries themselves depending on the situation. The Vryad Brigade damages a random enemy by two when played, but repeats this ability every time they move. This unit, on its own, can double the point output of Brover, so definitely not a card to underestimate. These two cards are preferably used over the course of the match to maximize their point gain. Our other options, on the other hand, are best kept for the late game. The Great Oak is a really cool new card added in Crimson Curse. 
it boosts a whopping 8 base power and boosts itself by the amount of units on its right when played and damages a unit of your choosing by the amount of units on its left. This makes it extremely versatile and a huge finisher if you have a lot of units left. To use it effectively, you do need to make sure that you move most of your units to the same row by the end of the round, but otherwise you're good to go. If one of your rows is filled, Great O can provide a massive 16 points in one go. The other side of this option is setting up your opponent's units on one row as well. This sets them up for huge row finishers. Both the Crushing Trap and the Lacerate card damage all enemies on a row by 2 for a possible of 18 if the entire row is filled. This is actually more feasible than you might expect, especially against decks that play a lot of units. Keep in mind that Crushing Trap only triggers at the end of your next turn, so don't play it as your final card. Combined with the Great Oak, this makes for some possibly strong finishers and big turnarounds. One more card that also fits this MO but isn't included in the deck is Dragon's Dream. This creates a row effect on your opponent's side that triggers after 3 turns and damages all, those, all the units on that row by 3 each. The provision cost however is a bit too high to my liking to include it in the deck, but you technically could work it in with a few adjustments. To fill up the deck I've added a few extra damage dealers, such as Cleaver and Gimpy Gurwin to have some more oomph where needed. And Xavier, Xavier Moran, is a straightforward boost card that can also provide you with some extra points if left alone. Moving him around can be really lucrative if a sentry is also on the field, boosting him and boosting him again because of his ability. Especially if you combine him with a Dryad Matron and Brewer's ability as well. He can get to really, really large point totals. And like that, everyone joins the Squirtle Shuffle. I hope you enjoyed the episode. This deck is a blast to play and something you don't often see when you're uh, playing in ranked. Got any ideas to adjust and improve the deck? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out as always. Check me out on Twitter and at TrophyNut if you want to talk. And if you've enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is always really appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye!